Um, many years ago, um, I had a guest at Wat Panana Chat for the night. It was Lumpur Liam, the, the abbot of uh, Wat Bapong, the Dhamma heir successor to Ajahn Chah. And uh, I was telling him that many Western people have a real problem in their, in their practice and that they, um, they have a lot of self-aversion and that they think that they're worthless. And so I, I, I translated, I was speaking in Thai, and, and, and so Ajahn Liam looked at, looked at me in his inimitable way, and he said, but they are worthless. <laughs> he said, we're all worthless. Um, and, and this is a, um, a, a kind of startling um, a point of view, perhaps, but it, it very much reflects the, the way that we deal with experience. Now, uh, our, our, our habit and, and the way that we're taught and our education is, is uh, very much concerned with content and uh, in our experience, our, you know, the content of our thoughts, our memories, our imagination, um, we give this great importance. But in, in meditation, uh, we're shifting the, the focus from content to process. Um, and one way I I've developed a talking about this as saying, looking at everything in your experience as a verb rather than a noun. There are no nouns in, in Buddhism, okay? So your mind, your ego, your thoughts, these are all verbs, okay? They're not, they're not nouns. Um, now to put that in a, in a slightly more traditional way, um, everything that arises passes away. And, and in meditation, uh, I, I've spoke uh, previously about the importance of a foundation of, of, of sila and, and scrupulous and care um, about the way that one relates to the world around one as an as a important foundation for mindfulness. But the second one that uh, my teacher Ajahn Chah would stress very much is, is right view. And, and uh, right view can be expand, expanded upon, expounded upon uh, at great length. But to put it very simply, is everything that arises passes away. And it's from that viewpoint, they say everything is of the same value. So you could say everything is infinitely valuable, or you can say everything is worthless. I mean, it's more or less the same thing. But um, in, in meditation, it's like going on a, on a journey, an inner journey, and um, you start to um, experience some um, strange things, perhaps experiences that are a little bit um, unusual. Maybe your uh, your body starts to feel extremely light, like you're floating uh, up into the air, or you may feel your body's very heavy, or you're sinking down into the earth, or you may feel that certain parts of your body disappear altogether, like uh, you know an arm's disappear or legs disappeared. Um, and if your mind becomes very peaceful, then your whole sense of of, of the physical body disappears. So these in themselves are not problems. They're, I mean, it's just the same, um, this same, same old thing. Everything that arises passes away. Um, and if you maintain that awareness that whatever arises and passes away is not self, it's not me, it's not mine, um, it's, not, um, it's not Nibbana, it's not ultimate truth, it's not what you're looking for. It's, it's uh, the stuff that you are finding ways to, to deal with wisely by um, abandoning attachment. So that means that if you have, uh, you could have a vision perhaps of um, going, uh, being in the presence of, of the Buddha himself, or you, could have a, you could have a vision of hungry ghosts um, with their uh, thin necks and their big bellies asking you for, for some kind of help and assistance, and, and whatever um, that experience may be, whether it's a visual phenomena, an oral phenomena, a physical phenomena, whatever it, in whatever guise it may appear, although the, the content may, may vary incredibly from something incredibly inspiring and wonderful and, and, and something which is quite frightening and, and puzzling and so on, then um, your refuge is always whatever rises passes away, it's not self. It's not me, it's not mine, this is not what I'm seeking in meditation. Now, because we're, we're, we are experienced junkies, you know, and the whole idea of enlightenment um, is, is perhaps um, uh, 
presented as a sort of the ultimate experience. So, so um, many people embark on meditation looking for special experiences and, and looking on the special experiences as some kind of validation, you know, that, uh, or, or something to tell your friends about even. Um, but that's not the point. It's not the point what the content of your experience is, it's how you deal with it and whether you can maintain that clear seeing eye that whatever rises passes away. You're not uh, emotionally uh, investing in it, you're not giving it undue importance and significance. You're saying, yes, it's just that, it's just the way it is, this is the way the mind is. Oh, that's, that's interesting, um, that's unusual. Um, but whatever, however strange and unusual and weird um, experiences might be, um, they're just the same old stuff. They're just stuff that arises and passes away. It's all, as uh, Ajahn Liam told me, you know, yeah, we are, it's all worthless. I mean, it's just the same stuff. So it's, um, it's, a, it's a radical re, uh, recognition and a re, uh, realignment of, of the way you look at experiences. And, and by the way, um, the, the weird and strange experiences um, don't arise for, for, for some people, or very, very few of them do. And that's not a sign that you know, you're somehow spiritually impoverished and someone who has all these kind of uh, amazing experiences is, um, is doing a lot better than you. It's, uh, there are all kinds of causes and conditions which um, affect these things. It's your relationship towards them rather than their particular nature which, which is the important thing.